Hello, it's Raktar, and today is the big day. The day that I've been waiting for. A lot of people have actually been waiting for this day. I know many of my viewers have been excited for this, but I must, before these cutscenes start, I must have a few disclaimers. I'm no Dark Souls pro. Don't expect a lot from me, but I love this series, and I'll talk more about that once these cutscenes wrap up. Perhaps you've seen it. Maybe in a dream. A murky, forgotten land. A place where souls may mend your ailing mind. You will lose everything once branded. The symbol of the curse. An augur of darkness. Your past, your future, your very light. None will have meaning, and you won't even care. By then, you'll be something other than human. A thing that feeds on souls, a hollow. Long ago, in a walled-off land far to the north, a great king built a great kingdom. I believe they called it Drang Lake. Perhaps you're familiar. No, how could you be? But one day, you will stand before its decrepit gate without really knowing why. By the way, the load times in this game are ridiculously long, so I'm going to be cutting out a lot of the ridiculously long loading screens, like this one.
All right, the things betwixt, and now is the time when I get to talk about my love for Dark Souls. So, anyways, this is Dark Souls 2. This is a game that I have been, ever since its announcement, I've basically been shitting my pants in excitement for this game to come out, because I fucking... I think that Dark Souls is basically one of the, like, modern games that really, really encompasses, like, where gaming should be going. It's a game that sort of puts goodness on, like, challenge, but they don't make it... Now, albeit they make it tough, they don't make it too tough. They... It's like... It's punishing, yet rewarding. Like, I have never played a game in so many years where I feel as rewarded as I do when I play Dark Souls correctly. By the way, there's monkeys here, but I wouldn't advise trying to kill them because, uh... You don't have any weapons, and they'll swarm you and kick your ass. So, you may notice that I'm kind of running directly to uh, some of the items here, and that's because I... Admittedly, this is a blind playthrough. I, I have not seen any of this game except for, you know, obviously, a few of the gameplay clips that they showed on internet. I am not gonna go this way. I actually saw my... So, I watched my brother play, like, the first 20 minutes of this game, and that's why I know where things are. But I'm like, I noticed when he went down this way, I was like, this is probably not a smart way to go without any weapons, because, as you see, there's giant footsteps, and at this point in the game, you're basically useless. You start out with absolutely nothing. I just thought I would go point out that you can totally go right at the beginning of the game, it looks like, and mess with some kind of major enemy, but I am not going to be doing that, because I don't think that that's a very good idea. Especially since you can't even kick the ass of a group of monkeys at this point in the game. But anyways, my undying love for Dark Souls. Something I should definitely talk about as I sort of get into this game. So, I'm going to preface my undying love for Dark Souls by saying... I'm not good at Dark Souls. The original Dark Souls? Extremely challenging for me. I'm not like one of those pros that you see speedrunning it on Twitch. I'm not one of those like people that's totally awesome at it. I'm just your average Dark Souls player, and that's what I think is going to make this playthrough very interesting for my viewers, is you're going to see me fail a lot, but here's another cutscene. <laughs> what seems to be the ruckus? Oh my, your face. The face of the curse. It's an undead. An undead has come to play. <laughs> they all end up here. All the ones like you. You spoke to that kind old dear, didn't you? <laughs> You're finished. You'll go hollow. Yes, you'll become one of them. Hollows prey upon men, feast upon their souls. This is the fate of the cursed. <laughs> what is your name? Well, ladies, obviously these women are all hitting on me. So I better get my name right. By the way, for some reason, I can't switch the input method on my PlayStation right now. I was trying to do it yesterday. It just wants to do it like this. I don't get why it wants to be like this, so whatever. Of course, there's only one name I could use. And yes, I'm very sure my name is Raktar. That's who I am. Oh, at least you know your own name. Here's your reward for sharing. It's a human effigy. Take a closer look. Who do you think it's supposed to be? Think back deep into your past. Yes. It's an effigy of you. Mm. 
Which brings us to character select. I think that in this game, I'm gonna do something that I have never done in a Dark Souls game before. I think I'm gonna go sorcery. Uh, I've never done a caster type person in a Dark Souls game. So, I definitely think that's what I wanna do this time around. Which, I mean, if that's what I'm gonna do, I'm wondering if one of these items, uh, mayn't possibly be good for, um, mayn't very possibly be good for, uh, a caster, but I'm not gonna show all this. I'll explain my class and stuff when I'm done. Chubbo. Definitely gotta be a Chubbo. So, in Dark Souls, you can just keep on hitting random. This is something I loved about the original Dark Souls. And basically, it'll just keep on making different versions of the face you have. And because it's got no real uh, settings to know what type of face to be making, you can just get super ridiculous, like, blue skin with, like, crazy faces. So, I'm gonna go with a totally random face. I never care about what my character looks like in Dark Souls, so I basically always try and make my character look as ridiculous as possible. Alright, that's the face I'm settling on. Uh, if you don't like it, go suck on it. That's my dude. This is Rakdar, the crazy looking chubby wizard. This is my true self. Hopefully I didn't make any mistakes in my character creation. But this cutscene will continue, I think, a little bit more, or possibly All it ends. people come here for the same reason. To break the curse. You're no different, I should think. Hmm, doesn't stand a chance. Well, you never know. <laughs> through the door and trot along to the kingdom. But remember, hold on to your souls. They're all that keep you from going hollow. Oh, I'll fool you no longer. You lose your souls. All of them. Over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> and that, I believe, is it for the opening game cutscenes. By the way, one thing that I definitely noticed as I um, started this game compared to like starting Dark Souls or even Demon Souls is the cutscenes in this, like, really go above and beyond. You could definitely tell that I feel like there was probably some pressure from publishers, or maybe there wasn't, maybe they really just had a huge budget for this game and they really wanted to go all out, but I sort of feel like there, po there was possibly some type of pressure from, like, higher-ups to sort of, like... Okay, so it automatically casts spells. Yeah, some sort of pressure from higher-ups to see if, like, they mate maybe won't to, like, go way in deep on the, uh, on the whatever stuff, on the, wow, what am I trying to say? If they might have maybe wanted to go in super deep on the cutscene stuff, which is definitely, in the past, if you know anything about Dark Souls, if you've ever played a Dark Souls game, you would know, let's see, oh, you may also light torches on them, cool, well, I don't need a torch right now, because I don't think the game is going to be too dark. But anyway, I finally get to talk about, and it's probably the second episode, but no, it's probably not, about what I love about Dark Souls, and it's that this game has some kind of, like, brilliant design to it that is kind of impossible to put my hand on whatever I love so much. Like, it's just, they put so much care into everything in this game. The bosses always are, like, super epic and cool. Just everything about Dark Souls has always been superbly lovable. And I don't know. And that's why I've always loved Dark Souls. I think it's really interesting, though, in this game, some of the polish that you didn't see in the original Dark Souls, is, and it's definitely, like, something that they sort of decided to add in this game, is, um, this level of kind of... Like, you see the little flourishes. Like, if I pause, and then I go out of the pause menu, like, everything is, like all smooth and flourishy. The UI isn't just, like, some static thing on the screen. Oh, crap. So, yeah. 
I guess what's interesting, you're gonna see me, not only are you gonna see me play this game blind, which is what I'm doing, what's super crazy is you're gonna see me play this game, um, having never, ever ca played as a caster before, which could turn out to be pretty ridiculously crazy, because I don't really know, like, the first thing about uh, being a caster in Dark Souls. My brother always told me that being a caster is, like, super cool and super fun, but I was just never 100% sure that casting was my thing. I'm a really melee guy. Like, when I play World of Warcraft, my main dude was always a rogue, although I, I did have a priest, and the priest was pretty high level and pretty, like, bitchin' as well, but the rogue was my dude, so... Ooh, and if I want a dagger... Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put that on, so... I get the feeling that... It wouldn't be a bad idea to have... Oh, it automatically equipped it as an offhand weapon for me. Which is weird. Oh, look, I've got a sweet cowl and sweet things I could be wearing. Although, um, weight is super... Like, it's crazily important in this game that you... Oh, what the fuck? Oh, I'm in... I know what I'm doing wrong. That's one of the rookie mistakes you can make is still being in your wrong menu when you're doing shit. But yeah, weight is super important in Dark Souls games because you actually are limited in how fast you can run around the world and see where we'll finish them off with the dagger. There we go. But yeah, so you're limited in how quickly you can run around in Dark Souls based on a percentage of your weight, which is pretty crazy to me. Uh, what's really funny about Dark Souls games, they don't really tell you a lot of the kind of like ins and outs. So it's definitely like pretty bizarre that they're just kind of like expect you to like figure it out for yourself and crap we get a hit in on me but yeah so they just kind of expect you to be able to like figure shit out for yourself and so if you have too much weight on you you'll start moving slower but was what was crazy to me when I first played Dark Souls they didn't tell you like how much weight and so I had to go look it up or you can sit there and experiment for a while but I seriously in my opinion if you're like a new Dark Souls player I'd say instead of experimenting for a while you're better off, like, not doing that. Oh, hey. So here's a thing. This is something that... You, yep. You, give us smooth. Give us smooth. Okay, so what's interesting about this... Yes, you. Give us Mickey. Yep, okay, okay. Is I happen to know there's a deal with this, and I only know about this because um, when I was playing the original Dark Souls, I looked up what to do. Alright. Leave? Yes. So if I leave that right there, I think a bird will come give me a present. Right? Maybe not right now. Maybe I have to come back? Come on, bird. I know you want this present. So if you leave the item they ask for, which the, the stone is called the smooth and silky stone, a bird will come exchange it for another item. But it could be possible that the bird won't come until I've gone to a bonfire, so... I suppose... Oh no, is that the item? Nope. I have to wait. Alright, whatever. And why can't I kick this down? Oh, because I'm still in the goddamn menu! There we go. You, you, I did! Goddamn birds! Alright, well they have the stone. I'm gonna come back and check that spot. <gasps> How do you get to the... Oh, you fall to that. That's some of the Dark Souls trickery right there, is a lot of stuff is sort of counterintuitive. That, yeah, that's why they said to move the camera, actually. Is there's places where you just straight up have to drop to get items, which is one of the, I think, more charming stuff about things about Dark Souls, is that... Oh! Light sconces with a torch. So I do need to have a torch. Well, shit! I guess I should have lit my torch back at the base because I want to light all these sconces. Alright, well, shit. I guess I'll go... Oh, but I have, I'm gonna have to... This is shitty. I'm gonna have to sit at the bonfire, thereby resummoning all those enemies. <laughs> so yeah, when you rest at a bonfire in Dark Souls... Um... Oh shit, maybe I didn't have to... Oh, I didn't have to do that. Okay, I've got five minutes on the torch. Fuck! Fuck, 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 I've got only five minutes to light sconces. I'm sure there's some kind of crazy-ass reward if you, like, light all the sconces or something, but I don't know what that reward is. But we're gonna do it anyway. We're gonna light every sconce. And you know what, though? 
The great part about Dark Souls is you can just... Oh, there we go. You don't really have to fight... Oh, crap! <laughs> you don't really have to fight enemies in Dark Souls. Fighting enemies is for the weak. The true strong at heart just run past all the enemies. And actually, what's funny about me saying that is it's semi-false, but it's actually semi-true because in Dark Souls a lot of the time um, once you sort of have got the lay of a land down and you just kind of want to get from boss to boss to boss, it's always, you can just run past enemies, and the game sort of almost expects you to just run past enemies. Like, the way they have it set up, even, is sort of just like, hey, you don't need to fight these dudes, they're just gonna get in your way anyway. So, it's in your best interest to just run past everyone, and not get murdered. Oh my gosh, this might be the biggest mistake ever. I'm at 349 left on this torch, and what's funny is I don't even know if lighting these sconces is gonna do anything, but something gives me, like, this feeling that they wouldn't tell you... Oh gosh! Oh! <laughs> I've got life gems. I can use a life gem if I really want. Oh yeah! Eat shit, bitch! Yeah! Take that! Take that, me! Alright, uh, let's use a healing gem. How do you use a life gem? Maybe I can't use one while I have my torch lit. Alright, whatever. We're gonna jump! Don't die! Alright, there we go. Set light. Hopefully it can't hit me from there. And... torch. Put it out. And... eat a life gem. How do you eat a life gem? 